Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a daily walk with wisdom, walking in wisdom, being filled with the wisdom of God. That's not ordinary knowledge or it's not common sense. It's the wisdom of God. It's how God would want us to live our lives, uh, how he has designed us to be. Uh, today we're looking at the 13th Psalm. And David wrote this Psalm shortly after he was anointed the new King of Israel. Uh, it had been a challenging period where David's character was probed and provoked as Saul's jealousy raged. Saul represents the uh, old generation of leaders. The uh, new breed is represented by David. Saul is the old wineskin. David is going to build a new wineskin. Saul represents the head and shoulders above kind of leadership, the alpha male, the choleric leader. Uh, David is the leader with a heart after God. Experienced leaders ought to use their privilege and position to help make a way for the next generation to rise up. They should be opening doors and giving opportunity. But as things turn out, the soul generation often resists the new and it clings to power and tries to hold the David generation back. It's always been so. It's no less so today. And we're going to have a look at verses 1 and 2 of Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? and day after day have sorrow in my heart. How long will my enemy triumph over me? This song teaches us that between the anointing and the ascension, the promise and the fulfillment, there's a test. Waiting for the fulfillment of God's promise is the most difficult thing of all. It can feel as though God has forgotten you. The promises mock you and the call frustrates you. That's when we begin to question the anointing and we doubt the prophetic word. We wonder if that person was merely using flattery. That's when we find ourselves alone and I'm wrestling with my thoughts. Nobody understands what I'm going through. I'm isolated and the enemy tempts me with self-doubt, and I wonder if it's ever going to happen. This is the journey that every one of us must take, and it's a journey from self-preoccupation to God. You can't rush your way into your future. The vision waits for an appointed time, Habakkuk said. The greatness of your destiny necessitates that God become greater in your life, and that requires the reduction of the ego. As John the Baptist said, he must increase, and I, that's myself, my ego, the I, me, my, that must decrease. All of our waiting exposes our self-reliance. You feel like it's never going to happen and you'll be tempted to make it happen yourself. Either that or you might give up and pursue something more tangible. But if you endure and if you keep your heart in worship and if you maintain your trust and walk faithfully and prayerfully and don't let your frustrations compromise you and don't accept lesser paths that tempt you to leave the road less traveled, and if you don't reach for the scepter too soon, then God's word says, though it tarries, wait for it. 
it will surely come to pass and will not delay. Suddenly, the door to your destiny will open and you'll be fit to enter. I pray you'll enter this day a little wiser than you did yesterday and that your day will be blessed and be profitable, be full of health and fruitfulness, full of opportunity and encounter. Have a great day and we'll see you again tomorrow morning. God bless you.